<gasps> I didn't see you over there. Actually, I didn't see you at all because it's just the camera. But, you know, you get the point. We are going to be talking in this lesson two of unit one of middle school A about number lines, which may be something that you've seen before, probably is. Again, like I said in the last video, a lot of this early stuff is going to be review. We're going to be focusing on a few different parts of a number line. We're going to be focusing on the scale that you draw a number line at and the neatness with which drawing one. And the first thing that I want to bring up, I'll do it while I'm still big and all these things on this on the screen. When you're doing a number line, if you're in my class, it is mandatory that you use a ruler. And if you're not in my class, I really encourage you to use a number line when you're a number a number line when you're drawing a ruler. A ruler when you're drawing a number line. The more you can keep things neat in math, the better off your life will be. And there are a lot of different things that I teach in my various classes. Like, for example, whenever I change colors on a multi-step problem, which we don't have very many of in this class, but when I change colors on a multi-step problem, it's really helpful if you will do the same when you're doing your work on a homework or a quiz or a test or whatever, because... <coughs> That way you can see those intermediate steps. And it also makes you take the time to put that pen down and or pencil down and then pick up the other one and do the work and then and change it. It forces you to slow down and think about what you're doing and keeping keep your work nice and neat and organized. It'll help you a ton. This is a big, big deal. It's gonna, the further you go in math, the more this is going to be useful. So let's dive into the content. So we're going to we're going to unlike our last video, this is not as concept heavy. We're going to do, we're going to jump in straight with an example. Our example is going to be graph the following on a number line. Whoa, that M went wacko, didn't it? Still wacko, but closer. Number, <coughs> excuse me, line. Okay, so let's let's make us a list of numbers we're gonna graph. We're gonna do we're gonna do some integers, right? We're not gonna we're not in this video. We're not gonna do uh, rational numbers. We'll talk about ordering rational numbers at a later date and some of those topics. But for now, <coughs> excuse me. For now, we're gonna just talk about the number line itself. So the first thing we need to do is get our get our problems. So. We're going to do numbers 5, 2, negative 8, 6, and negative 1. Okay. So, we need to, the first thing we need to do is we need to use our straight edge to draw a straight line. Now, I have the ability to do it with the computer because I'm doing it on the computer. You can pull out a straight edge and do it that way. We put arrows at the end of the line. The arrows, in case you don't know, represent that the li that lines go on forever. So now what I like to do, at the, especially at this phase, I want to kind of see where our numbers are. So the smallest number on this list is this negative 8. So we're going from negative 8 up to 5. 5 is the, is the highest number. So we're going all the way from here. To there, all right? I just scribbled that one. I didn't worry worry too much about that because I'm just we're just kind of getting our ideas when we're actually going to do the work. We're gonna keep it keep it very neat. All those kind of things. So in this case, we're kind of pretty centered around zero, like a typical number line. That's why I did these numbers to begin with, and and so just doing putting zero kind of in the middle, and then making tick marks that are roughly equal distant. We can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we can go negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if you're counting by ones, you don't strictly speaking have to label the tick marks. Although for now, this first example, we're going to do that anyway. And it's often a good idea to label them 
And the way I do it in my class, now that every teacher is going to be different. And this is going to be true in high school. It's going to be true in college. It's going to be true in middle school. All these things. Every single teacher is going to be different on what they expect. So you need to make sure you understand what your teacher expects. Or, and then later, if you're doing your own work and you're representing your data, you need to make sure that what we're going to focus on in this is using scales and things that make sense and display the data well. Um, but for me, if, if you're, you, I don't need every single tick mark labeled. I just need enough of them labeled so I can know what you're counting by, what the scale is. So since I'm counting by ones, there we go. One, two, three, et cetera. And then negative one, negative two, negative three. Now, I also like to label uh, with numbers the numbers that I'm graphing. So I'm going to graph two. And I'm going to put a dot right there. It's already labeled, so I don't have to add anything. I'm going to graph five over here. So three, four, five. And since I put a dot, I like to go ahead and label the ones that I'm that I'm putting dots on. It's just, it's just much easier to read. And then we're also going to do six. Since that one's right next to the five, you might could leave that off. I'm going to go ahead and put it on because I've been, been careful to make sure I have plenty of room. I have bunched up my numbers. All these things are very important, right? So I'm also going to put a dot at negative one. That one's already labeled. I don't have to worry about it. And then going down to negative three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to label negative eight. So there's one example. Now, what if... Our, we have an example like this. Instructions are the same, but the numbers are about negative 250, negative 125, 800, 365. Okay, so this time, if we were to count by ones, that would be tedious at best. So kind of thinking through this guy, again, the smallest number is this negative 250. And, and um, I, didn't, I didn't stop. Sometimes I, I'm, used to I'm still used to teaching high school. And so make sure if you're confused and you're in my class, you ask questions. And if you're not in my class and you're confused, make sure you put a, a note down in the comments and I, I will make sure and be able to respond to that and help you guys out. Um, you, you can probably figure this out from our example one, but I should have, since this is middle school A, been clear. The way number lines work is, in case you've never seen one before, is there is the zero, which is actually has a name. It's actually called the origin. And then positives go to the right. Positive one, two, three, four, et cetera, infinity, right? Positives go up going this way. And then negatives going go down going this way. You, you saw that on the last example, but I didn't explicitly state it. If anybody was confused, I apologize. And this is old hat. Remember, we're kind of at the beginning of the course. So a lot of review type stuff. So the negatives go that way. I'll bring this one back up. So you see they get they numerically get bigger as they go smaller. So negative one down to negative infinity, right? So coming back up. Uh, the smallest number here is negative 250, and the biggest number is 800. So if we count by ones, let me just, I think we'll just, I'm just going to on mine just erase this. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we count by ones, like I said, it's going to be a bad day, right? And so we don't want to do that. We could count by we could count by a lot of different things. What my rule of thumb is when I am and what I expect my students to do is I want you to count by the smallest number that makes sense. Because like if I was just like if I was to ask you to just graph 200, then you could put a number line. I'm not even since this is not a real example, don't write this down. And I could put a little thing, quit my number line. I could put zero and then I could put 200. Circle it. Yay. Happy day. But that's garbage. It doesn't tell you really anything. It doesn't tell you enough information about how far, how big 200 really is. It's a really use. When we, when we do a graph, 
it's meant to show you something. And this shows you nothing except for whoever did it was a smart aleck, right? Um, and so <coughs> that's your first hint that I'm kind of a smart aleck sometimes. But don't worry, it'll be okay. So we want to count by something else. In this case, we could count by 50s. We could count by 100s. We can count by 25s. We've got to go all the way from negative 250 all the way up to 800 on a, on a page, right? On a paper or on, on a, one screen here. So I'm kind of looking at this thinking, I think I want to count by 50s. And let's, let's see how this works. And let's, I'm actually also going to sm scoot my zero over a little bit left of center because I have more, a higher number over here because I'm trying to give myself space. You see how what I was talking about earlier? Like when you go and you do this on your own, you, you want to think about a way that will display the data well, right? And so we want to be able to see what's going on, right? So I'm going to make some tick marks that are equally spaced on here. And then let's see if we've got the space. I didn't really, didn't really count, didn't really think what I'm doing. So 50, 100, 150, that's enough in this direction to see what's happening. So 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. So this is not going to work, right? So I can already see that this is not going to be enough space, right? <clears throat> and so like even if I was going to 250, that would still be way over here. So I don't think that's going to work. And sometimes that happens. It's one of the reasons why we do math and pencil. It's not just because we make mistakes, but sometimes when we're work, the higher we, especially the higher we get, we're going to try something on a problem that doesn't work. And then we need to try and we need to figure out something else. Okay. So then this problem, it didn't really work. Right. And this might happen to you which is one of the reasons why I just kind of YOLO'd it and didn't really think really hard and whatever else, else because I want you to see that kind of working through it and, and I want you to be able to do the same thing. So if we count by hundreds, then we've got 100, we've got 200, 300, and then four, five, six, seven, eight hundred. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put a dot and label it because I think this is going to work out fine. So then we go down to 250. So now we end up with a little bit of a quandary because there's not going to be a mark for negative 250 on there. I'm going to make my tick marks about the same distance. Negative 100, negative 10, uh, 200, negative 300. So what are we to do? So this is the way I like to notate it. Of course, we're going to put our dot right in between. And then I want to make sure, especially if we're not putting our dot on a place with a tick mark, we might want to make sure and label it. Now, if we've labeled out there, then there's not a lot of space to jam it in there. So that's going to be hard to read. So what I like to do is I like to add a dotted line. If you're one of my students, this is the way I expect you to do it. If you're not one of my students, as long as you're, this works for your teacher, whoever's teaching you or whoever you're trying to display this data for, then this would work really well for you as well. So I'm going to label this as negative 250. So I've done this one, I've done that one. <clears throat> so negative 125 is the same way. Now, this is a little trickier, right? It's not going to be right in the middle. It's going to be over here, right? So then I'm going to draw my little dotted, dotted line and label that as negative 125. And then 365, that's just a tiny bit more than 350, right? So we've got 400 and then we got 350 halfway on here. And then 365 would be about right there. And that works works just fine for our scale. And then we're going to put a dot. See, see what I'm talking about on, on the more num the more you can get on there, the smaller your scale is, the easier it's going to be really to see. Because that, like if, like if we didn't have, <coughs> excuse me, if we didn't, let me think about how to do this. If we had, let me, and then if we, didn't have any of that information. You were to look at this and label. Now, of course, these are labeled, right? This is going to be labeled as 300. Oh, 300. Oh, I can't do that either. So if we didn't see that, and then they'd be labeled. This one, if they weren't labeled, then the dots on there, it, I mean, that could be 365. That could be 350. And somebody just kind of messed up on how they were writing it. That could be 360. <coughs> and so the more precision we can have in our number line, the better. Oops. Come back. Yeah, there we go. 
the more precision that we can have in our number line, the better, because it's easier to tell what's going on. Because again, graphs and charts, the entire purpose of them is to display data and to be able to display it in a way that is useful and tells the story of whoever is, is trying to tell this story. Okay, so that's all we're going to talk about with number lines and all that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about rational numbers and stuff in the future. Then we will, <coughs> excuse me, then we will pick this up again and we'll talk about ordering fractions and decimals and all of those kind of things and all the conversions necessary for that and all of those things and all 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 the, the jazz with that and all, all the awesome stuff. I think I said all enough times. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments. So I need to say all a few more times. Or just comment all in the comments. Then I'll know you made it to the end of this video. If you're one of my students, thank you for watching this video. And I'll <coughs> see you in class. Do your homework. All those things. Come, come to class. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. All the things. If you're not one of my students, thanks for joining us. Let us know how else we can help you with your math journey, science journey, general homeschool, all of those things. Have a wonderful day.